What's going on guys, it's Speedoms, and today I am bringing you the do's and don'ts of visiting the USA. I thought this would be kind of a fun little video to react to. I know I haven't been very regular with the uploading, and I really, really want to change that. Uh, this week especially, I'm going to be focusing more on getting more constant videos out. Um, it's just, it's been a crazy time these last, like, month or, well, yeah, about a month or two, yeah just been crazy so anyways i'm not going to spend a lot of time on an intro because this is a long video um so if you guys want to see anything else like this let me know down in the comments below and in the description will be my twitch the original video to this uh all my socials so go check those out and yeah all the obligatory stuff out of the way let's get right into it hey there fellow travelers mark here with walter's world and today we're in mystic connecticut in a beautiful place here in the u.s and today what we have for you are the don'ts of visiting the u.s because Anywhere you go in the world, there's things you should do, but there's also things you shouldn't do. And this video is going to just cover the U.S. in general, okay? And our first okay. step for when you visit the U.S. is don't touch the Americans. Look, Americans really like their personal space. It's like they have a bubble around them, and if you get too close to them, they feel very, 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 very uncomfortable, okay? So Would you feel comfortable if somebody just went up to you and was like, I wouldn't. I, I don't think that's just an American thing. I think that's just a any animal. Like, go up to your dog and do that and see if your dog likes it or your cat and see if your cat doesn't scratch your face off. Like, uh, no animal likes that. I mean, yeah, so not, I'm not saying every cat's going to scratch your face off for doing it, but you get my point. No animal is going to like you just being up in their business. Um... I don't know if this comes from, like, the European greeting of, like, a kiss on each cheek or what. Which, yeah, I guess in America we're kind of like, what? But, I mean, you know, we do fist bumps, handshakes. Like, it's not like we never touch anyone. That That's a weird one to me. So make sure you give them a little distance when you are there, you know? Because I know when I go to Italy and Spain and stuff, be like, Mark, how's it going on this stuff? And my American friends sometimes go, wow, they're really, really affectionate. Like, that's just how it is. Here, space is key. The second don't I have for you is... Don't count on public transportation. Look, that is we true. We were in China and we were in throughout Europe and South America. We took buses and trains and planes and all kinds of stuff to get all over the place because public transport is really developed. Here in the U.S., you cannot count on public transport to get you a lot of places. Yes, in big cities like New York and Chicago and stuff like that, you can get around for the public transport and it will take you where you want to go. But a lot of towns, small towns especially in middle-sized cities, the public so this is Boston. I know that. I know Downtown Crossing. Um, at least in Boston, the one thing that he hasn't mentioned, he might end up mentioning, but especially with, like, the subway. Well, actually, the subway is not usually too bad. Uh, but, like, buses and things like that, you cannot rely on them because they're never on time. It, it's not even a fact of, like, they don't go everywhere you want to go. Like, just getting around the city, you can't even rely on them because they're not... They're never on time. So, yeah, that, that that's a good one. Networks that's a good are one. are not very good. And at night, sometimes it's not very safe. So that is kind of a frustrating thing. So, yes, that's true you're going to probably it's have really to not rent a safe. car when you come here, okay? So just have a heads up for that. And that kind of leads into the next don't I have for you is that is don't underestimate the size of the U.S. The United States, it's you know, continental U.S. is like continental Europe. It's huge. I mean, would you think of driving from, oh, I'm going to do, you know, go to from Lisbon to Paris and then go up to Tallinn and then, and then head down to Sofia. Sophia. No, you're like, that is insanely far. It's the same thing when you come to the U.S. I meet yep. a lot of travelers that are like, oh, I'm going to fly into New York, grab a car, drive down to Miami to see Miami Beach, and then head over to L.A. I'm like, dude, you got two weeks? You're going to spend the entire time in cars. The mm -hmm. distances here are insane. So what I recommend is picking a region. So, oh, we're going to stay here in New England and see New England. Or we're going to go in the southeast, you know, go to Atlanta and Savannah and Charleston, things like that, or, or visit yep. the west coast. You do that to get a better idea of the culture. That's the only way you can do it. By the way, that's a striper. That's actually, uh, that's a small one, though. Is that even legal? Like that, but also, uh, yeah, that's legal. Just... That's probably a legal size one. Anyways, um, <laughs> enough about the fish. That has nothing to do with it. Yeah, if, if you're coming to America, you definitely have to choose where you want to go. You can't just be like, oh, I'm going to America. and I'm going to see everything. No, no. You, you can drive 12 hours inside of Texas and never leave Texas. Um, just driving in a straight line. So, like, I, I think it's, like, six hours to drive across the UK. 
from like north to south so like why oh you gotta realize like yeah texas is massive but so is the whole united states so i uh i i definitely agree with this if you are going to visit the united states pick a specific region that you want to go to or plan a road trip accordingly and actually look at how long you're going to be spending in the car you know find spots along the way to stop and have a good time at there's, there's plenty of things to see across the country so uh, that that's really the only way you can do it is if you plan a really long like month long road trip uh, that that's the only way you're going to see the country and even then you're not going to see even close to what you want to see just the logistics things because it's so far between the places and to go along with that for americans a three to four hour drive that's a day trip. Like my parents live three hours away. I will literally get up, go drive, have lunch with my mom, and then drive back home just yeah. for lunch. Six hours in the car. No big deal. It's about seven hours. We start to think, hmm, that kind of is a long drive. And we drive the entire way through. Okay, this isn't like, oh, I must stop every two hours and have a 15 minute break. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. We drive all the way through, okay? So that kind of depends. Next, don't... I don't, I don't want to miss anything. That's why I'm pausing, but. That kind of depends. Um, you, if it's only like a three, four hour drive, yeah, you drive straight through. If you're doing, you know, if you're trying to drive from like New York to Florida, not many people can do that drive without stopping, you know, at least, you know, few, you know, four or five times. Um, that, that's like a 20, I think it's like a 26 hour ride. So, yeah, no, you, you stop. He, he, I, I get what he's saying on like a two, three hour, four hour ride. Like we don't stop and take a break. We just want to get there and get it over with. But at the same time, like people got to pee, people got to eat, you know, you want drinks, whatever. Like, unless you're like a dedicated person, you're going to like use a bottle to use the bathroom and like, it, it, no, 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 no. People stop. For you when you come here is don't think that the sticker price is the end price. Look, yep. in the U.S., we have mm -hmm. sales tax. I know other countries, they have VAT, value-added taxes. They're already yep. put into the price of products. So when you see, oh, it's $1 or 1 euro, oh, I only pay 1 euro. In the U.S., it is not like that. We have sales tax. So a certain percentage Required is added 66. on to that product. <laughs> and the thing is, I cannot tell you what the sales tax will be where you're going to travel because it's different everywhere. Cities, states, counties different products have different sales taxes and some products don't have sales taxes some cities don't have sales taxes some have 10 percent sales tax all right he, he's being misleading here it's not the cities that that individually post taxes it's the states so we have a federal tax and we have a state tax sales tax generally falls under state taxes um there are certain things that get taxed by the federal government as well but those are usually included in the prices. Also, if a specific city has a mandate on, you know, pricing or whatever, like uh, there was a town that I used to live in and they put a specific policy in where you couldn't sell um, individual cigars for like under $2.50 or something like that. Like that's a state mandated price. That's not really a tax. Um, it, it's It's a little bit different generally you know if you go to one store in massachusetts versus another store in massachusetts i say massachusetts because that's where i live but you could say that about pretty much any state that i know of unless i'm wrong and he knows something i don't um if, if you go from one store to another inside of a state you're going to be paying the same sales tax massachusetts is 6.25 percent i think maine is like six percent uh i think rhode island's like five percent or something like that i don't know but I, I i do know that um the sales tax does not jump around like he's trying to make it sound like it does it can be different anywhere you go so if you're gonna go get your dollar menu item at a mcdonald's or a culver's or a wherever it's not gonna be a buck where i live <laughs> there's two cities right by where i live one it's gonna be a dollar eight the other one it's gonna be a dollar nine so be ready for that and it's not just the sales tax also there could be the tipping on top and that so that just sounds to me like one was charging 99 cents one was charging a dollar or one just rounded up and one rounded down i don't know but that that doesn't sound right to be paying different tax in different cities unless like the city has some weird tax that i've never heard of in a city um at least in new england i've never experienced that and i've traveled around a little bit too and i've i've never experienced that leads that. us into the fifth don't and that is don't forget to tip 
Look, in that's the US, a big one. You tip 15 to 20 percent. That a is a big one. Restaurant. OK, now McDonald's, stuff like that. No, you, you don't tip at a fast food place. But it's a sit down restaurant where they bring you your food and stuff like that. You will tip them 15 to 20 percent. If you are in a group of six people or more, sometimes they automatically 18%. put the gratuity on there, yep. which sometimes can be 18 percent or something there like that. Look, when you come to the U.S., there's a reason why the food is like so <laughs> affordable. You're like, wow, it's cheap to go out and eat in the U.S. It's because there's kind of this understanding that the service fees and paying for the workers and the waitresses and stuff like that, that goes on to you, which the is so dumb eating there with the tips. So the it's food so and dumb. stuff can be cheaper when you go out to eat. And I know a lot of minimum wage. Wage for waiting is like the right thing. way below more. the actual well, if, if minimum wage that, that we have. Food, they can do that, but they don't. Okay, so tipping is something we do do here in the U.S. So, so you, you really do have to tip because they, they well, live also, off of their tips. If you're at a bar and you're buying drinks, you're going to want to tip a couple dollars here and there. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the bartender might not be too quick to come back and get you your next drink. Not only that, I, I know he's about to move on to a point. That's why I'm pausing again. Um, I know some people hate the pausing. I'm sorry. I have to or else I'm going to miss what's going on. Um, but yeah, wait staff gets paid literally like nothing. Like they get like $2 an hour at times and stuff like that. So I think in Massachusetts, they get paid a little more than that. It's like four something for minimum wage, but like minimum wage is half or even a quarter for waiters as it is for like anyone else. Um, the other thing, what he mentioned about the, the bartenders, not only will they not come back to you as quickly, but if you if you tip on your first drink well, your second drink is going to have more alcohol in it. Like it, they free pour, they don't measure their pours. Um, typically, you know, I mean, they measure it based on you know how much time they've had the bottle tipped. They know how much alcohol has come out. But instead of you know being like a second or a second and a half pour, they might you know be like, eh, that's about one second, and you know just keep going and going. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, you do want to tip. So falling off of those tips, what you need to realize is our next don't is don't be freaked out by the over-the-top service and free stuff you sometimes get in the U.S. Over-the-top service? Because of tipping and commissions and stuff like that, yes, there is a lot of over-the-top service here. But the thing is, I guess US, in other the countries, are pretty nice and they want to help people. And sometimes that's some a big thing. That is a big thing. Countries where people don't get a lot of service sometimes, it can be a bit much, so don't freak out about it. Yeah, people also, think that this, in America, free we're very unfriendly. No, that's not true. Americans Look, are very friendly. Restaurant. They bring you bread and water. The ones that you see online really are like that's included the, the minority. In that's not okay, so if you're what be we are. Something, in they're going to give you some free stuff. It might be some bread. It might be a salad. <laughs> yeah, it might be a, if you the water. Try. It might be something like that. So yeah, you always get free like bread and water, like, but that's about I didn't, it. I didn't order this you don't bread. get a lot of free salad. stuff. Oh, no, that comes with your meal, okay? Now, the thing is, though, you can't just go in and get chips and salsa and walk out, all right? You actually have to order some food when you go there. Now, my next one for you is don't smoke cigarettes in the u.s if you're smoking cigarettes yeah. in the u.s people will look at you like you're trying to kill their baby cigarettes is like totally verboten like people really frown upon it which is funny because when they talk about marijuana and stuff like that people don't seem to care as much but cigarettes oh you're trying to kill my baby with that cigarette two blocks away so if you do smoke make sure you try to find a place where you can smoke because a lot of restaurants or pretty much all restaurants hotels stuff like that have smoke free it's smoke free so you got to go like 15 to 20 feet away from doing things so that can be something okay um few things he said there yeah like i i used to be a cigarette smoker i quit uh, I don't know. What's today's date? I quit about seven and a half months ago at this point. Um, I never like experienced anything like that, really. I mean, I was, I generally tried to be respectful. Like if I was smoking somewhere and a kid was walking by, you know, I'd try to move or, you know, do something. But generally, like I never ran into anything like that. And also if people are acting like that for cigarettes versus marijuana, um, there's never been a case where marijuana itself actually caused like cancer or, or did anything like that like that there's a lot of documented evidence that secondhand smoke can kill you you don't even have to smoke a cigarette and it can kill you whereas with marijuana we don't really know and also with the amount of alcohol i mean th this looks like it's going to be an alcohol store because he has the 21 plus and in america it's 21 plus for alcohol um we drink a lot of alcohol here, so I don't really understand the, the marijuana comment there.
but whatever. Uh, you, you're comparing smoke and smoke, but that's like comparing cigarette smoke to campfire smoke. Like they're they're two different smokes. So I don't know. So Moving on. I've come here outside my favorite liquor store to give you the next don't, and that is. Also, you can't smoke marijuana alcohol, in pub public. Unless you're you just 21 can't. So. Or cigarettes, unless you're 18 or over. Yep. In the U.S. Uh, 21 for cigarettes at, and in some is, places don't too. Don't forget your ID. I know because Boston, I think, like changed it to 21. Under, I don't know if any states that. have yet, but they I know cities are starting to. They don't ask. They could get in trouble and get fined. So don't be surprised, because we've had friends that have come here, tried to buy alcohol, and they're like, "Sorry, you, you don't look old enough." Oh, I don't have my ID. Too bad. And the thing is, yep. it's not just a person buying. They might ask anybody with you, so make sure everybody has their uh, ID. They want to buy liquor, or they want to buy well, they want to buy alcohol, or if they want to buy cigarettes. So, so that that one right there is kind of a judgment. Um, I used to work retail, and you know, like th th that that's definitely a judgment thing. Like it says right here, you must be twenty one to enter or accompanied by a parent. The person buying needs to have an ID. Um, now, if you have a kid who's like 21 and he's with people who look like 17, you can refuse to sell to them. But, you know, if, if you're clearly like, you know, like if I go into a liquor store and they go to ID me and I don't have it and then my buddy goes, oh, I'll just buy it for you. They'll be like, whatever. Like they're they're not. I don't, he, he's exaggerating a lot in this just video. Just FYI on that one. Oh, that's also another don't I have for you is don't bother with a metric system. When Although it also here, depends on where you use, are too. It, or sorry, so. we don't use meters. We don't use kilometers. We don't use liters. It is inches, feet, miles, gallons. Who doesn't uh, know this one? Pounds, things like that. And I'll put a conversion chart here to show you. But honestly, you may say, hey, how far is it to this next town? And they'll tell you, oh, it's like 60 miles. You're like, what's that? Just know 60 miles, eh, it's about 100 kilometers, okay? So just do that because the people here won't get it. I mean, I have people, when I'll tell them, oh, it's 100 meters away, they're like 100 meters. It's like 100 yards. Oh, okay. So make sure you do know your imperial system, okay? Because metric, we don't do that so much here. I mean, yeah, but you can also just Google, you know, miles to kilometers conversion. Take two seconds. Like, it. I don't know. If you're visiting, I wouldn't really worry about that one too much. But also, if you're visiting America and you don't know that we don't use the metric system, then you need to do more research on America because that's like one of the first things you find out. So, so our next don't is when you do come to the U.S., there's a couple things you don't talk about, okay? One is gun control, and two is Ooh, politics. That's a no good one. I was are, thinking politics and religion. On either side of the spectrum, and they will have an argument with you. So it's that, best just that's to a good one. lay off those topics. Talk about the yep. weather. Oh, wouldn't it be nicer if it was sunny today and we could go sailing? Yes, that would be much better than discussing gun control or politics. Just put that very, out very true on that right one. now. Now, my next note for you is don't assume that all the U.S. and all the Americans are the same. Because I know a lot of people say, oh, you're a typical American. What's well, like saying you're a typical European? Look, the U.S. has all kinds of different cultures, all kinds of different people, all kinds of different topography and scenery and stuff like that. And when you come here, don't assume it's all the same. You will see regional differences in cuisines and how people treat each other um, and how everything looks, all kinds of stuff. So don't just think there's just one kind of American. They're all fat, slobby guys with ponytails. No, there's actually a lot of skinny people in America, too. Not just yeah. fat guys like me and my buddy Jeff. <laughs> there are those. So don't assume it's all the same. All right. So do go out and explore. And that's why I always say is if you're going to come to the U.S., go and explore different regions because you'll get a really different feel. Because going to the southeast and seeing the, the plantation homes and, and going to see the, the southern towns down there versus going to the northwest and, and Seattle and Portland or going to San Francisco or going to the Midwest with Chicago and Milwaukee, you're going to have a very different feel, which yep. is really a cool thing to do. And you start to understand is, wow, the U.S. does have a lot of different cultures within it a lot of different feelings what's crazy is you can even go from like and massachusetts to new that, hampshire I guess I would say another don't and if you don't, don't assume there's no culture if, if, if you don't know the united states just look at a map of the united states and if you go from just massachusetts to new hampshire you literally drive like one town over it already feels like you're in a different place and if you go new if you go like a few towns even further into new hampshire it's like you're in a completely different country like it's so strange it's even going like from Eastern Mass to Western Mass is a big difference. 
So yeah, I mean, every everywhere you go is different. West, because there are a lot of cultural centers out there. If you go down to New Orleans, yep. you see a very rich culture there. If you go to New York or Boston, here in New England, you have a very distinct culture. In the Midwest with Chicago, Milwaukee, you go to the West Coast. I mean, there's a lot of different culture here, historic culture with the Native Americans or more mm -hmm. recent culture here. I mean, you have all that here you can really take in. And saying there's no culture in the U.S., it's not really true because there are all that these has to be Florida centers with great museums like no, the Art Tarpon Institute of Springs, Chicago or the Met in New York. The I think I've been LA. there. To that all specific kinds of stuff dock. you can see and do when you are here for a cultural trip. It's not just seeing beautiful landscapes and, and seascapes like we are here in Connecticut. There's a lot more to it than that. Now, my next dome for you is one that I kind of get a lot of questions about. We actually have a video on this, and then that is don't think that how are you or how's it going is actually a question look when we say <laughs> yeah. how's it going how you how are you these kind of things in the u.s it's not a question it's a statement it's like saying hi okay just take it as a hi because a lot of people say this everyone asks me how i'm doing when i try to tell them what i'm how i'm feeling they're like well i was just saying how are you here so that that can be kind of confusing because sometimes when you ask like how are you or how are you doing you actually want the answer and then like sometimes you don't it really depends on how well you know the person if you do, like for instance if i when i was working at a gas station people would come in and be like oh how's it going you know whatever the most i ever expected was like oh good you know like even if they're not good you just say good or you know oh, i'm still kicking or you know something some quick little you know response and that's it you're not expecting them to to be like oh well you know actually you know i'm about to go through a divorce and this and that like you don't want to get into that stuff you just you know you're trying to show that you're being pleasant even though you don't care about that person if that makes any sense how are you is just hi think of it that way it's like in france ça va ça va How, is it, how's it going how's it going we're good to go in portuguese to the bane everything good you answer back to the bane everything good it's just, how are you? How are you? You move on, okay? So don't think it's an actual question, all right? Now, another don't I have for you is don't expect a lot at the fancy hotels. You know, you're thinking, oh, I'm going to pay more money for this hotel. I'm probably going to get nicer stuff, like a nicer breakfast, better Wi-Fi. Oh, no, 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 no. For some reason in the U.S., it seems like the nicer the hotel, the more you have to pay for the things you think would be free, like Wi-Fi and breakfast. So don't feel like Wait, you have to stay at the this fancy video? hotels. I think this video is... Is it Miami Beach or I I don't know exactly where it is, but there's like a water spout over this way, I believe. Like when they pan to that to the right more, I believe there's like a water spout that forms or something. I've seen this this exact like view from this hotel before. Um, anyways, that that is kind of true, except for when you get to like so you have like three levels of hotels basically. You have you know the the upper echelon like you know where the stars stay. Um, those typically, yeah, everything you get, you need to get like a la carte. Um, I, I would assume Wi-Fi at this point is built in, but even like TV isn't always guaranteed. Um, uh, but if you stay in like the mid range hotels, you're going to get the complimentary breakfast. You're going to get free Wi-Fi, you know, basic cable. Um, you're going to get, you know, certain amenities. And then when you get to like the really cheap places, that's when you have to start buying everything again. So, because honestly, if you're going to be going out and exploring, you just need a couple beds, yep. right? So no, thirteenth floor in a lot of them the too. People think that's you, unlucky. Free Wi-Fi, free breakfast, all these kind of things, which is really nice. So don't expect that from the fancy hotels. Another don't I have for you is don't skip out on the local food. Look, we're here mm. in New England. We're here in Connecticut. We've been having lobster and clams, and oh my god, the New England clam chowder. Oh my tummy is just like more more it's fantastic that was cringy when i'm in the south that was man, really cringy so fried chicken mac and cheese barbecue oh but yeah. my god the food in the different regions in the u.s are great so don't just go to chain restaurants when you go to your hotel ask them hey what's some local restaurants around here what's some locally owned and operated restaurants so you can go there and check out those places because they really give you a great experience and i find a lot of times those ones actually have better service than the chain restaurants yep. because it's a mom and pop place where the owners are the ones helping you out and that is really kind of a cool thing so mom and pop I mean, just means like it's locally owned like you know your neighbor could be the owner or something like that it's not this big chain like mcdonald's or you know something like that um i don't know if that's like a common phrase throughout the world but Next don't for you is don't get sick. Look, 
healthcare in the U.S. is insanely expensive. Yep. And just because you come from another country doesn't mean they're not going to find you for the bill. All right. So if you're going to be coming here, make sure you get travel Depends, insurance or trip yeah. insurance. So in case you do get sick or you do break an ankle or you do break an arm or something happens to you, your insurance will cover it. Now, you might have to pay it first and your insurance pays you back, but at least you'll get something back because health insur- health care in the U.S. is insanely expensive. Okay. So make sure you're prepared for that. And I guess it's my last so note expensive. I want to have for you is one that. They um they they actually charge women to hold their babies after giving birth. Just think about that. Um, an ambulance ride's like a thousand dollars or something like that. Like it it's it's crazy. They it's out of control over here. So definitely, if you are traveling to the the United States, that is the best piece of advice he's given throughout this whole video. Is make sure you get the insurance because if something does happen and you need to have something taken care of, you don't want to be putting it off because it's going to cost you you know ten thousand dollars to have. Like a simple like, you know, little procedure done or something. Like you, you just want to be taken care of. So, uh, that 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 is the People best advice. People actually got given. mad at me for when I lived in other countries when I told them the U.S. has fifty states, and they said no, the U.S. has fifty two states. Look, don't think the U.S. has fifty two states. The U.S. has. 50 states okay just just a heads up on that one i'm sure that people are going to be commenting down below that when i was in school they told me 52. no there's 48 on the mainland and then alaska and hawaii are 49 and 50 all right so those are our don'ts for visiting the u.s what are some of the don'ts you have for the u.s because i know there's more out there i just want to get some of these out. is that really a thing do people actually think that the U.S. is 52 states? I thought it was pretty like pretty clear at this point that it's the 50 states. Then again, there are people in the United States who don't know how many states there are. So he might have just come across idiots. That they exist everywhere. I don't know. I honestly, I, I really don't know. You know what? That's the question I'm asking you guys. Did you guys know that there are 50 states and not 52? Um, let me know. Cause I honestly, I, I didn't know that that was a thing at all. Um, but yeah, th- this was an interesting video. I know I was very critical of it, but there were some really, really good points in there as well. So, um, I don't think anything he said was like a straight up lie. I think he just kind of over exaggerated on a few points, but generally this was a pretty decent video. So, uh, I'm going to wrap up here. This has been, oof, this has been such a long video. Um, but if you guys enjoyed this and want to see other videos like this, let me know down below what you guys want to see next. Um, uh, I'm still going to have the cricket videos and all that coming and, uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed and I will catch you guys on the next one. See ya.